Okay, so hi there folks, we're now in our next video in statistics and in this video, this is the first one to tackle about um, two um, sample t-tests which includes independent means. So we're going to take into consideration this problem. So a study of the effect of caffeine on muscle metabolism used 18 male volunteers who each underwent arm exercises tests. Nine of the men were randomly selected to take a capsule containing pure caffeine one hour before the test. The other men received a placebo capsule. Um, that is, uh, you know, uh, they, 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 uh, it's a fake capsule just to let them believe that's, ca that's caffeine. So during each exercise, the subject's respiratory ratio, um, that is their RER, was measured. So RER is the ratio of the carbon dioxide produced to oxygen consumed and is an indicator to whether energy is being obtained from carbohydrates or fats. So the question of interest um, to the experimenter was whether, on average, caffeine changes RER, that's your respiratory ratio. So if the populations being compared are, we call the men who have not taken caffeine, that's the placebo, and men who have taken caffeine, that's the caffeine here, if caffeine has no effect on RER, the two sets of data can be regarded as having come from the same population. So the results were as follows. So we have here the, the men with placebo who have not taken the caffeine and then the men who have taken the caffeine. So we're going to use the t-test, uh, two-sample t-test with independent uh, means. Why will we use that? Because we are given two independent samples of two different, um, you know, two different samples. And we're going to test if there is a significant difference between the two samples. That is, um, is there a significant difference for those men who have taken the caffeine versus the men who have not taken the caffeine? So we're going to measure that using this p-value method with four steps. So be with me. So let's have step one. <clears throat> that is, um, you know, writing the hypotheses. So we're going to have two. Again, remember the null and the alternative hypothesis. So we're going to call the first one the null hypothesis. So um, we're going to have it since we're having two samples or two populations in this in this in this regard. So we're going to make use of the mu. So we're going to find the mu here. We're going to insert in just a moment. We're going to insert a symbol of the mu. And hopefully it's here. There you go. Um, sorry about that. Okay, mu. So we're going to call this mu sub one or mu one. It should be sub one. I, I cannot do that in Excel. Um, okay, so let's have this mu sub one minus, uh, let's copy this. Mu sub two is equal to zero. That is their difference is zero. Um, some books would like to write it this way. Or actually, you can write it this way: the mu sub one is not equal to mu sub two. So it can be written in other ways. Um, anyways, um, it the, it tells you that there is. Oh, sorry, it should be equal. Is equal. So it tells you that there's no difference. So um, here in the first statement, um, it just tells you that mu sub one minus the other mu is equal to zero. That is their difference is zero. Uh, it's also equal to this one, meaning they don't have any difference. Um, by algebra, what you can do in this first um, statement here is that you just transpose the mu sub 2 to the other side, giving you this equation. So they're the same. So we're going to consider now your h sub 1 or your h sub a. I'm going to make use of that, your alternative hypothesis. We're going to tell people that they're, they are not equal. That is mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2 is not equal to zero there is some meaning there is there's a difference between them or some books would like to use mu sub one is unequal to mu sub two so that's how we write our step number one um, with our hypothesis let's proceed to step number two wherein step number two is we're going to make use of excel here step two that is, we're going to now identify our p-value, okay, making use of data analysis here. So we're going to have that step by step. Um, just don't forget that our alpha level by default is um, equal to 0 0.05. So anyways, let's, let me 
put that here that your alpha level our default alpha level is equal to 0 0.05 okay so how do we get the p-value so be with me here um first prerequisites you should have or installed in your data tab in your excel you should have the data analysis over here if you don't have that yet again go to analysis tools make sure that the analysis tool pack is checked click ok with that uh, it should appear here if it doesn't appear so you should restart your excel and then on the next start it should be there um, you click on this data analysis and we want to choose the t-test of two sample assuming unequal variances so let's click ok with that and uh for our variable one we want to choose this part so placebo all the way to the last data we're going to indicate the placebo because you're going to i mean the the label here because we want to check the labels and for the variable two that is the caffeine and come here so again these are the the, the men who have not who have not taken the caffeine that is that, that's just a placebo here uh, these are men who have taken the, the caffeine so our, our hypothesis is different difference is that well there's no difference that's done also there's no difference of so zero there our alpha level as stated here is 0 0.05 that's our level of significance and i want to show my my answer here right here so i'll click ok with that and then excel will yeah there you go excel just put it over there and uh i want to highlight this oh, a little bit okay there you go so what do we want to look at here so here's the placebo here's the caffeine the the descriptive the descriptives are found mean variance observations um hypothesis mean difference their df is 15. Uh, your t statistic here's your t statistic if you're making use of the uh traditional method so you should use this i mean you will compare this to your to your critical value in the traditional method let me highlight this first and what we want this is um, two tail tests because we're making use of an unequal sign meaning both ends of the distribution um, have the critical regions or their rejection regions so we're going to look at p of two tailed and we're going to highlight that and that's what we really want that's what we really need so the p value is 0 0.0645649 okay so we're going to proceed now to step three um now let's put it here Step three. Step three is your decision rule. Um, what will you do? Will you reject or not reject the null hypothesis? So, um, therefore, we first see our alpha level here in our p-value. So we say that since your p-value is greater than your alpha level, oops, sorry, wait, it's greater than your alpha level. I would want to copy the alpha from here. okay okay so um since your p value is greater than your alpha level you can see that because um your your uh, p value is 0 0.06 and your alpha level is 0 0.05 so it's clear to say that your p value is greater than your alpha so remember the the decision rule that if your p value is less than your alpha which is equal to 0 0.05 by default you will reject the ho or the null but here since it's greater than so our decision rule um maybe you want to um explain that is um 0 0.06 for six let's end there let's end it with four decimal places it's greater than 0 0.05 okay clearly so therefore hence we do not that highlighting the word not we do not reject your null hypothesis okay i'll put step four over here so since we will not reject the null hypothesis going back in our problem so therefore we can see that there's no significant difference in the mean respiratory ratio between the men who have not taken the caffeine and men who have taken the caffeine or you can say that there's no enough evidence to support caffeine on average okay um changes the rer so we can put that in statement what did i say uh, there is no significant difference in the mean respiratory i need to go to another line respiratory ratio that's your rer between men who have not taken 
the caffeine. Okay. And men who have taken caffeine. So that's one statement which is good. Um, you can use this alternative statement uh, to deter to, to 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 write the the summary or the the conclusion. So there is no enough evidence to support caffeine on average. Um, next line. On average, changes their respiratory exchange ratio anyway RER means that okay so um so these are the statements in our step four let me highlight this statements here uh okay let's put it over there and uh, let's highlight this also these are your um answers for step three and step four so i think this is enough for this video um for the first example and how to uh, get the the t test or how to solve or you know analyze interpret and you know make conclusions for one problem uh, making use of t test of two sample means of independent sample means so thank you very much for watching hope you would like and subscribe thank you